Hey everyone, I'm back with another letter in our Peace Love Action book. It feels very appropriate and perfect timing that the letter we left off on on this special day is for Martin Luther King Jr. It's D is for dream. As we celebrate his birthday today and talk about his life, um, this is perfect. Here we go. Martin Luther King Jr. grew up in the United States in a time when the law treated people differently, depending on the color of their skin. If their skin was dark, like his, they had to drink from separate water fountains, ride in the back of buses, and go to separate schools, hotels, and restaurants. Segregating people according to their skin color is due to racism. The false belief that light-skinned people are superior to darker people. Racism had been used to justify slavery in the United States for 246 years, even though slavery had been outlawed in the United States since 1865. There were still remnants of racism written into the laws. Martin wanted to change that. He dreamed of people of lighter and darker skin all being fairly and equally treated. He imagined a day when people will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. In his famous I Have a Dream speech in 1963, Martin imagined the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will be able to sit together at the table of brotherhood. With this dream, Martin led the United States toward racial equality. Many people were rightfully angry at the unjust way black Americans were being treated, and they wanted to fight back with violence. Martin himself had been threatened, assaulted, arrested, and imprisoned. But Martin knew that to achieve his dream of former adversaries sitting together at a table of friendship, the table needed to be set with respect and peace, forgiveness and acceptance. He also understood that in the process of gaining, gaining their rightful place of justice, he and fellow civil rights activists must not be guilty of wrongful deeds. He urged them, we must forever conduct our struggle on the high plane of dignity and discipline. We must not allow our creative protest to degenerate into physical violence. Martin was a Baptist minister and was influenced by the teachings of Jesus and Mahatma Gandhi. After visiting Gandhi's birthplace of India, Martin said, I am more convinced than ever before that the method of nonviolent resistance is the most potent weapon available to oppressed people in their struggle for justice and human dignity. Martin Luther King Jr. saw the violence. He saw that violence leads to a cycle of anger, fear, revenge, and division. Hmm. Sound familiar? Nonviolence and civil disobedience, in contrast, he saw, appealed to people's consciences and allowed for reconciliation and unity. By imagining the ideal outcome and by holding a vision of unity, he helped the United States adopt civil rights laws that gave equal rights to African Americans. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> heavy stuff. It's not fun stuff. It's our shared history that we need to come to peace with and learn from so we can carry on and keep moving forward and doing the next right thing in peace and love and kindness. So here are some things that you can do. Envision what peace would look like in yourself, your family, your school your town, your country, and your world. What would peace look like between different genders, 
different races and religions, political parties and countries? Do different people share the same dreams? Think about where dreams begin and how they become reality. Watch Dr. King's I Have a Dream speech. I watched it with my students. Write your own I Have a Dream speech. Create a banner on which you and your friends can write your dreams for a peaceful world. Spread your messages wherever you are, throughout your school, in your community. You can visit the King Center in Atlanta, Georgia, or a Peace Center near you. Or why not plant a peace garden? Find a community garden and see if you can do something with them. Did you know Dr. King's ability to get people to share his dream continues to this day? There are more than 900 streets and 77 schools in the United States named after him for a reason. He was a man with a mission and that mission still continues this day. It wasn't until the United States passed the Civil Rights Act of 1964, which outlaws discrimination based on race, color, religion, sex, or national origin. It prohibits race, racial segregation in schools, public accommodations, and employment. A lot was accomplished, and there's still more work to be done, and we will continue to march on and be peaceful warriors and act in peace and love. Thanks for listening.